Thank you for joining us as we continue our study through the book of Luke. Luke and its companion book, Acts of the Apostles, portray the church as God's instrument of redemption on earth. We're going to be continuing our journey as we open to chapter 8 of the book of Luke. If you would turn there with me, please, tonight. There was a lady who'd come out every morning to her front porch, and she'd raise her arms and shout, Praise the Lord! An atheist moved next door, and over time he became very irritated with this lady's daily routine, and he began to step out on his front porch and yell after she said, Praise the Lord! He would yell, There is no Lord! Time passed. The two neighbors continued their ritual every morning, and one morning, the lady shouted, Praise the Lord! Lord, I have no food! Please provide for me! The next morning, when she stepped onto her porch, there were two huge bags of groceries. She shouted, Praise the Lord who provided groceries for me! The atheist who was hiding in the bushes jumped out and shouted, There's no Lord. I bought those groceries for you. The, Lord threw, the lady threw up her arms again and shouted, Praise the Lord! The Lord provided me for me and made the devil pay for it. Well, look at your Bibles tonight. Luke chapter 8, we're going to be looking at verses 26 through 56. So they arrived in the land of Gerasenes across the lake from Galilee, as Jesus was climbing out of the boat, a man who was possessed by demons came out to meet him. Homeless and naked, he had lived in a cemetery for a long time. As soon as he saw Jesus, he shrieked and fell to the ground before him, screaming, Why are you bothering me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Please, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already commanded the evil spirit to come out of him. This spirit had often taken control of the man, even when he was shackled with chains, he simply broke them and rushed out into the wilderness, completely under the demon's power. What is your name? Jesus asked. Legion, he replied, for the man was filled with many demons. The demons kept begging Jesus not to send them into the bottomless pit. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the hillside nearby, and the demons pleaded with him to let them enter into the pigs. Jesus gave them permission. So the demons came out of the man, entered the pigs, and the whole herd plunged down the deep hillside into the lake where they drowned. When the herdsmen saw it, they fled to the nearby city and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, for they wanted to see for themselves what had happened. And they saw the man who had been possessed by Neban sitting quietly at Jesus' feet, clothed and sane. And the whole crowd was afraid. Then those who had seen what happened told the others how the demon-possessed man had been healed. And all the people in that region begged Jesus to go away and leave them alone. For a great wave of fear swept over them. We're going to tonight look at, this is kind of a summary, does Jesus have authority over the difficulties in your life? And then what if God doesn't seem to answer your prayers on time? Do you still trust Him? And then third, in this study, we're going to see Jesus take authority over the powers of darkness and death itself. The last half of Luke chapter 8 gives us two incredible stories of Jesus combating the forces allied against humanity, the host of darkness under the control of Satan and darkness itself, death. This took place in Gerasenes, which is on the opposite side of Galilee. Just before this episode, Luke records for us Jesus' control over the elements as he calmed the raging storm that threatened to scuttle the disciples both. Now we see Jesus commands much more than just the weather, but all the powers of the universe, and we'll see that he calls us to drop our fear over what is allied against us and trust him no matter what. 
First, we're going to examine Luke 8, verses 26 through 39, regarding the legion of demons. Verse 25, the area of Gerasenes, or well-known Gadarenes, was probably southeast of the Sea of Galilee. It was populated by Gentiles, including what was known as the Decapolis, or ten cities, which did not belong to any country, but were self-ruled. This is why we find a herd of pigs there. Pigs were unclean to the Jews. Luke shows Jesus continued efforts to reach out to the Gentiles, though his primary mission was to the Jews first. Then verse 27, look at that. Notice that although the man was driven out of the town and lived alone among the tombs, avoiding human contact, when Jesus arrived, something very strange happened. The man is waiting for him on the shore. Now I wonder if the demons weren't going on the offensive to scare Jesus away from their territory. Now we know from Daniel that demons do claim geographic regions. Matthew tells us there were two men. Apparently only one did the talking. Look at verse 26 or verse 28. But even if that was the demon's original intent to scare Jesus, uh, when they saw Jesus, they realized it was not battling, but begging that they needed to do. Sometimes it isn't until we really experience the real presence of God that we understand the real power of God in our lives. The demons basically said to Jesus, we have nothing in common. Now, they were not bowing down in worship, but in willing submission, really unwilling submission. And just because a person uses God language or even may quote the Bible, doesn't mean they are believers or they are saved. In James, it says, even the demons believe and they shudder. So what does the Bible say about demons? The Bible tells us that demons are fallen angels who joined Satan in their rebellion against God and who were defeated and cast out of heaven along with Satan. We see that in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. Demons continue to serve the devil in attempt to lead the world away from God and into sin. Jesus, Jesus will ultimately banish Satan and his demons into the eternal fire. To understand what demons are, we must look to the ultimate evil spirit himself, Satan. Revelation tells us that Satan was once an angel in heaven, perhaps even a cherub, Revelation chapter 12. Because Satan was a heavenly being, we know that Satan, as well as his angelic followers, were created good, but by their own will chose to reject God and become evil. Do I quite understand that all? No, I don't. But we understand that's what happened. While we have no definitive answer as to whether Satan rebelled against God because of his own pride or some other reason, we do know that a war erupted in heaven in which the archangel Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels fell. Once again, Revelation 12. Satan and the other fallen angels were defeated and as punishment for their rebellion were cast out of heaven. We see that also in Luke 10, 18. Satan became the prince of demons, Matthew 12. And he and the other fallen angels were hurled to earth. Once again, Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, and ultimately condemned to hell, Matthew 25, 41. Now, what can demons do? Demons continue to serve Satan on earth by luring mankind away from God. Now, despite their expulsion from heaven, Satan's demons continue to serve him in his plot to control the earth by luring people into sin. The Bible warns of Satan's grave threat to humanity by referring to him as the, quote, the God of this age, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, who prowls the earth looking for someone to devour, 1 Peter 5, 8. Demons are no less dangerous as the Bible describes them as impure spirits, Mark 1, 27, deceiving spirits, 1 Kings 22, 23, the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil, Ephesians 6, 12, 
and once again in Revelation 12 as Satan's angels. Now the Bible tells us that Satan and his demons can inflict harm on the earth by, number one, possessing people to cause them physical and spiritual harm. I'm going to give you some scripture references regarding that. Matthew 12, 22, Mark 5, 1 through 20, and to make them do evil, Luke 22, verses 3 and 4. And then blinding the mind of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Deceiving people by disguising themselves as servants of righteousness, 2 Corinthians 11, 14 through 15. Promoting false doctrine, 1 Timothy 4, 1. And performing signs to deceive humans, Revelation 16, 14. Tormenting believers, 2 Corinthians 12, 7. Now, how can Christians resist evil? Christians can resist Satan and his demons by putting on the full whole armor of God. The Bible assures us that if we submit to God and resist evil, the devil and his demons will flee from us. James 4, 7. I know I'm giving you a lot of scripture, but if you'll just follow along. And also there's an outline available uh, regarding this teaching. In verses 29 through 30, notice that the demons or demon didn't come out right away. That, that somehow, because they could get away unless Jesus actually knew their name, but still asked them to identify themselves. He knew their name, but he asked them to identify themselves. The demon answered, Legion. A legion was the largest segment of a Roman army between three and 6,000 men. Verse 31. Now, Jesus had the power to send these demons to the abyss, are the Ibuso in Greek? This is a place of torment where certain demons are kept until they are released during the time spoken of in Revelation chapter 9, the bottomless pit. We come now to verses 32 and 33. They knew Jesus was going to throw them out, but they wanted to strike a deal. Apparently, demons can also possess animals. It was only by Jesus' permission. The animals, and Mark says, were about 2,000. I'm sure they panicked and ran down the steep slope and killed themselves. They were intent on torment. And that's what happened to the pigs. And this is always Satan's end. It's torment, not pleasure or peace or security or happiness, though he promises all the above. And then let's look at verses 34 and 37. Two pieces of undeniable evidence are placed before the people of this region. The man they knew as out of control was now totally normal. And the herds of pig that had been normal were now dead. And all this came under the direct control of this man, Jesus. Their reaction was fear over the power of Jesus and perhaps anger at the loss of profit from the pigs. What is your reaction to the power of Jesus in someone's life or when you read of it in the Gospels? Do you want to repel him out of fear? Jesus complied with their wish and never returned. Don't make that mistake in your life. Verses 38, 39. What a totally different reaction. The people want to never see Jesus again. This man never wants to leave Jesus' side. Isn't that the reaction of someone who has been saved by His grace? But Jesus wants him to go and be a witness, just like He tells us to go and be witnesses of what He's done in our lives for us. See, Jesus doesn't ask us all to have PhDs in theology or apologies or whatever. He just wants us to go back home and live our lives and share what He's done. And so... We ought to be doing that. Next week, we're going to be looking at verses 40 through 56 as Jesus performs another wonderful miracle as he raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. God bless you tonight. Pray that you have a wonderful evening.
Thank you for listening to that message. If you responded, we'd love to pray and connect with you. Simply go to www.tlfchurch.com slash tlf online. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. Leave your contact information, drop your message, hit submit. We'll have one of our church staff reach out to you. Remember, you can give online through our website or you can send in your tithes and offerings by mail. You can find all the ways to do that by simply going to www.tlfchurch.com slash online dash giving. Once again, we thank you so much for your faithful support during this time. On Sunday nights, our prayer team is committing one hour of prayer from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you have any prayer requests or praise report, we'd love to hear from you. Leave us a message on our website or you can send us an email at prayer at tlfchurch.com or send us a text at 323-389-7006. On Wednesday nights, we have our Unplugged Midweek Bible Study in which a new devotional will be posted at 7 p.m. on our TLF online page. Make sure you check out this amazing verse-by-verse study on the book of Luke. We thank you for joining us online today. We hope that you were blessed and encouraged by that message. Hit like, subscribe, feel free to share this with anyone else you know. We love you, we're praying for you. We pray that you stay safe, healthy, and positive during this time. Have an awesome week. We'll see you again next time. God bless.